Thank you, Bob, for the nice introduction. We'll get you out to the sand hills of Nebraska so you can see some good Nebraska beef and enjoy a steak. But thank you all for the opportunity to visit with you today. Our aging nuclear deterrent may be the most important issue today that no one is talking about, present company excluded, of course. It is an existential issue, one that calls into question America's safety, but also our prosperity in the coming years. But for decades, our political leaders have allowed the backbone of our national defense to atrophy. Lulled into complacency since the end of the Cold War, our nation truly has fallen asleep, ignoring how the world is changing around us. In 1967, our nuclear stockpile was at its peak, 31,255 warheads. That number has decreased almost tenfold since then. And yet the situation that we find ourselves in today, we are not safer than we were in 1967. That year, the world was in a tense state. The Cambodian and the Nigerian civil wars began. Social unrest was increasing. Israel was at war in the Middle East, and China detonated its first hydrogen bomb. Underneath all this lay the simmering conflict between the United States and the Soviet Union. Those conditions forced the United States to stay awake, to remain vigilant as we faced the possibility of nuclear war. The Cuban Missile Crisis had occurred just a short five years previously. The American public and our leaders knew the only way to ensure American safety was to maintain a modern, a diverse, and a credible nuclear arsenal, a posture that served as the bedrock of our national security. What lulled our nation asleep was the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. As the threat of nuclear war passed from the public consciousness, modernizing our nuclear weapons and delivery systems, they fell in a priority for American leaders. Today, we're looking at global conflicts that are simmering and that are erupting yet again in Europe, in the Middle East, and in Asia. And today, we face not only the bear, but the dragon as well. While we've slept, the Chinese Communist Party has been wide awake. Within the last several years, China has achieved a strategic breakout, rapidly increasing its nuclear arsenal and seeking parity with our own. China is accomplishing this task with relentless speed and efficiency, and it's now on track to at least double its nuclear warheads by 2030. This is not a shift that we can continue to ignore. China's saber rattling, it is backed now by their massive and their growing defense budgets. And this underhanded foreign policy betrays the nation's true intentions. We should have woken up to those intentions. And the Chinese nuclear program, let's be honest, about 10 years ago. But at the very least, now that we are now again facing a great power competition we cannot, we must not allow ourselves to drift back to sleep and into complacency. You know, there's plenty of blame to go around. Presidential administrations and Congresses, both red and blue, they failed to prioritize our nuclear deterrent. We've seen this with painful clarity in the Biden administration. This administration has failed to fully capitalize on the progress of the Trump administration's 2018 Nuclear Posture Review. Last year, 
the Strategic Posture Commission produced an authoritative, a bipartisan assessment of our current nuclear posture, as well as recommendations for our arsenal's modernizations. As you know, these recommendations were comprehensive, covering the United States nuclear strategy and posture, conventional capabilities, and the defense industrial base. Earlier this year, I introduced the bipartisan Restoring American Deterrence Act to address some of the shortcomings that were highlighted in that report. This act would require the department to reassess our nuclear force posture, including a requirement to plan for the deployment of additional ICBMs. The bill would also restructure how the department oversees and coordinates on nuclear matters and improve NNSA management processes. Further, it seeks to build back our atrophied workforce. We cannot execute programs of record, much less build and maintain a proper nuclear deterrent without a skilled workforce. And that's why the bill requires the Secretary of Defense to work with the Departments of Energy, Labor, and Education to develop a strategy to promote a skilled nuclear manufacturing and vocational trade workforce. The Senate's version of this year's NDAA includes several key provisions from my Restoring American Deterrence Act. As you know, the NDAA is a pr product of bipartisan collaboration and debate. And I believe we've seen that really grow in the last few years. My colleagues and I overwhelmingly agreed that effective deterrence demands change. This includes the changes outlined in the Restoring American Deterrence Act. It also includes the development of new weapons that fill known capability gaps, like the nuclear-armed submarine launch cruise missile, commonly known as SLICM. Congress has, on a bipartisan, bicameral basis, supported the development of this system, despite the strong objections of some in the Biden administration, because we understand the need for SLICM is clear. I'll work to ensure that these provisions are included in the final reconciled fiscal year 2025 NDAA and to see the President sign that into law. But this effort must continue long after this year's NDAA has passed. Legislating alone, it's not going to solve the problem. The new presidential administration must implement these changes and prioritize the continued modernization and the expansion of our nuclear deterrent. It is not something we can delay for the next five years. It is something that we must prioritize now and never again forget for the sake of America's security and prosperity. America's security is a bipartisan concern that requires bipartisan commitment. Unfortunately, some are still asleep. They dream of the day when China, Russia, and North Korea decide that they want world peace. The day our enemies voluntarily dismantle their nuclear programs because America has done the same. We need to be clear on this. That is a fantasy, a utopian dream world. We've seen this worldview most recently manifest in calls to terminate the Sentinel program which will, will replace the rapidly aging Minutemen 3. Some even argue that based on its cost and danger to Americans, we should abandon that entire leg of the nuclear triad. Well, Sentinel has its challenges, to be sure. But the department determined correctly 
that the Sentinel remains essential to our national security and that, quote, there are no alternatives to the program which will provide acceptable credibility to meet the joint requirements at less cost, end quote. We will address Sentinel's challenges, identify the best path forward, and do everything possible to emplace Sentinel as soon as we can. The threat environment demands nothing less. We need robust nuclear capabilities, not for the world we wish for, but for the world that actually exists. And that world is an increasingly perilous place. At all costs, we must stay alert, not make decisions based on the dream of a world that ignores these realities. British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher said it well in 1987. A world without nuclear weapons may be a dream, but you cannot base a sure defense on dreams. A world without nuclear weapons would be less stable and more dangerous for all of us. As the new access of Russia and China emerges, let's heed her wisdom and encourage others to heed it as well. If we invest now in our future security, the United States can face the threats of China and of Russia and of North Korea with confidence. If we do not, the United States will stumble, unprepared, unguarded, into an uncertain future. Thank you.